So we found the neutral position and that was found with the uh, offset needed. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to insert plus 12 here. And just notice what happens as I program this. Okay, so the motor starts rotating counterclockwise and it's doing it quite fast. Now I'm going to change that to 12 to a minus 12. And let's see what happens. So there you go. Now the motor is rotating quite fast and this is clockwise. Adding 12 and removing 12 changes the direction. Now I want you to see that right now is rotating clockwise and instead if I add 36, let's see what this does. What do you think it's going to do? It's doing exactly the same. So minus 12 and plus 36 give us the same result. If I remove this number and program it again, then we should go back to the neutral position. There we are. So this is neutral position. To explain what happens when we add 12 units or add 36 units and the motor starts rotating one way or the other way, I'm going to use this chart that we presented earlier, the polar chart. And I'm going to ask you to look at this uh, time series or XY chart in the top left. See how we have a bottom that is zero, a top that is 255, and then we have this middle line, uh, the green middle line, and that one will run through the value of 127. Now, the power stage is going to receive these different values for PWM, and what's going to happen is anything on the green line is going to be zero volts, therefore it's going to create uh, zero current on the coils. But as we go up to 255, then that current is going to be positive or the voltage is going to be positive. And if we go down to zero, then the voltage will be negative. Therefore, the current will, will um, circulate in the other direction or it's going to be a negative current. So let's look at how this green line transfers into the polar plot. So we see it here around between 100 and 150. 127 and it's constant just as it is here and then we have 250 255 is the top of all these three lobes and these three lobes correspond to coils a b and c and what we have here is the beginning is zero at the top and then the end is 47 so we have in total 48 steps which resemble an electrical revolution but will also resemble 360 degrees. Now let's watch how this chart uh, goes from zero, crosses 127, reaches the top at 255, and then goes down, crosses 127, and then comes back to zero, which would be exactly the same that's happening here. Starts from zero, crosses the green line, comes up to 255, crosses the green line and goes down to zero. And this is one cycle for one coil. Then it begins another cycle for another coil and another one. And there is some overlap, as you can see. So it is easier to see here how this lobe is separated by 120 degrees from this lobe and separated by 120 degrees because this whole revolution is 360 degrees and it's divided into three segments. To better explain the behaviors we're seeing in our motor, I'm going to use these two vectors, the red vector and the blue vector. The red vector will be what we're reading on the lookup table and sending to the coils. The blue vector will be the position of the motor. Right now, they're both in phase. Therefore, the position is being matched by the magnetic field. So when I rotate to different positions, the field is always coming with me, thus generating zero torque, because it is pointing exactly to the direction of the rotor. 
If I want to generate torque, then I need an angle between these two vectors. So for example, if we add 12, that means that we're going to be reading our lookup table 12 units ahead of where we are now. That phase is going to generate a magnetic field between the two vectors, between the stator and the rotor. And when it's 90 degrees is when it reaches its peak power. That's when we're going to have the maximum torque and it's when the operation will be most efficient. Therefore, what would happen is when this polarization occurs on the coils, on the yellow and orange coils, which are the ones involved, that's going to create a, a magnetic field that will attract the rotor towards the red vector. So the rotor will start moving, but then because we're adding this value all the time, then it will be like a donkey trying to catch a carrot that is attached to a stick. So then we're jumping from position to position to the next position and it will never reach that field. If we want to rotate the motor to the other direction, instead of adding 12, we can always add 36 and that will create the same behavior but in the opposite direction. Here, the magnetic field will be involving these three coils, the yellow one, the orange one, and the gray one in these proportions. So when we read this, this will create a magnetic field that will attract the rotor in this direction. And then as the rotor starts rotating, then the field is always ahead 90 degrees, pulling it at a constant torque. Now this is all good for rotating at ma maximum torque either way, but what if I want to slow down? In order to slow down, there's two ways of doing this. You may think of one of them, which would be, instead of creating a magnetic field 90 degrees apart, we create a magnetic field that is just a couple degrees out of phase. So maybe here, or maybe here. If we want more torque, we can always just add the angle Instead of 36, we can go to 42, that will create a smaller torque, or we could go to 4, 3, 2, or 1. That would create less angle, therefore less torque. If we want zero torque, we can always go and be on phase. Another way of creating a variation on the torque is to change the magnitude of this vector. Instead of being 100%, we can always go down to 50% or zero. It could be pointing in the 90 degree direction but have a zero magnitude, therefore it will create zero torque. In the code, we do it here. In order to change directions, we add 12 or 36. In order to vary the torque, we calculate the error and we multiply by a, by a constant. This is the proportionality constant. If the error is low, the value of torque will be low. If error is large, then we need to rotate that motor as fast as possible or with the ma maximum amount of torque to make it rotate. And then we need a lot of torque and the maximum is going to be 100%. When we go to the code, we see that just before sending the PWM to both to all the three coils, we're multiplying by torque and divided by 100. Also important to notice is, so this is the, val the value used for reading the lookup table, and it's going to use the electrical position, the direction, and the offset. And then to that value, we just add 120 degrees or 240 degrees. 16 and 32 come from this is zero degrees, 120 degrees would be here, 16, and you can guess that 270 degrees is 32. So this is the 120 degrees that the coils must be apart.